And welcome to another episode of At The Bar Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Mike. And with me today, joining us are the usual suspects. We have Jeff, a.k.a. Hollywood, a.k.a. Bad Audio Jeff. What's That's up? me. All of those things. That's what I do. I do You're them all very well. Always. Me? Yeah. I'm not even on the thing right now. I'm, I'm Googling other shit. All right, well, despite his handsomeness, <laughs> we have a guy who's even more handsome wrapping up the hosting trifecta. He's known as Foxy Chris. Chris, what's up? Not too much, man. Thanks for having me back. I think, I think Chris, I think your audio is fucking up. Is we're going to roll with it. Yeah. Yeah, we're, it we're, is. We're going to keep trucking. We're going to keep trucking, whatever. This was a lot better than the first time. We're yeah, not going to understand old, anything. Yeah, old bad audio Jeff, and Chris yeah. is the one who has audio that's well, messing up. Jeff, Chris has bad audio. That he's still breaking up. <laughs> yeah, like a lot. It sounds like you're talking underwater. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're opening beers. I decided to not be a bitch this episode and crack open a couple beers, drink with the fellas. So just going kind of while Chris is fixing his his equipment, Jeff. You can see here because we're video casting each other, which you guys won't see. But I'm drinking a Catawamba White Zombie White Ale. Yeah, I had that when I was in Asheville, and it's awesome. Really good yep. freaking white wheat. Like, like, really good. Yep, I'm digging it. Super crisp, real light. Love it. Real light. Uh, it's a shame we don't get a lot of their stuff down here, but uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we will eventually. Like I said on that episode where I rambled on about Asheville for an hour, uh, yeah. <laughs> everybody's trying to expand, so we'll be uh, we'll be getting them soon. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, what are you drinking? Oh, I'm actually drinking an Asheville beer myself. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me uh, let me click over to hang out so I can try I can and center this bad boy. It is uh, wicked. It's weed? wicked weed. It's Labont. Um, Labonte plum. So it's the Labonte sour ale fermented with plums. And it is, uh, it's a farmhouse and it's uh, super tart, real light, good, sweet, like dark fruit finish. So it's like, it's got a little bit of everything. That was one of my favorites when we were there and I was happy they had it in bottle. So I picked it up. So you were surprised. I mean, plums aren't very, you know, aren't used a lot in beer from my experiences. So I'm sure plums that was a are, uh, surprise for you. When plums are used, it, it's not what people expect because they think of a plum as a super sweet fruit, but it really doesn't put off a ton of flavor, I don't, in my opinion. Um, you know, that's probably something that Chris would be able to answer more of if he has ever brewed with plums, being a brewer. But uh, in my experience, I don't think plums come through a whole lot. They're more like a sweet, uh, full bodied type finish where you get that like sweet back kick of like a sugar bomb in the end but um i've had some sugar plum which i know is different sugar plum beers in the you know in the winter season uh but other than that no you don't see a lot of plum anything right chris chris you uh excuse me get your your, your stuff fixed nope can't hear you oh man oh no so we're gonna We'll, we'll get back to him uh, once he uh, gets his audio working. So, Jeff, you missed you missed last week. Now we kind of yeah. By wasn't the time you hear this real episode, well. you've you've the lat, I haven't released that episode you missed yet, but um, kind of we kind of we had Preston on to fill you in. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard it was good. Yeah. yeah, it turned out re very well, and uh, um, everyone missed you. It wasn't the same. Uh, but Preston, Preston killed it. He did kick ass job, as well, always. Preston's a kick ass dude, so it makes sense. Yep. Number one, so, um, number one fan. Number one fan. <laughs> but I, I gotta call you out just a teeny bit because you did go somewhere that I'm extremely jealous about. I did, yeah. So let me tell you Despite the backstory you under the weather. what happened. I was definitely under the weather. I woke up and I had uh, shooting back pains and muscle aches all through my body, and I happened to have this one day off of work and I had made plans to go to Tampa to meet my girlfriend's mom. And I Ooh. felt like, I dun, felt dun, like dun. shit. So I woke up and uh, drove up at like five 30 in the morning from Stewart all the way up to Orlando where I then got in a car and powered through a drive over to Tampa. And when we got there, the decision was ultimately made that we were going to go to breweries and drink some beer. So 
we went to <laughs> we went to a few places i was not feeling real good um i was having you know like i said the muscle aches but i was also just real sick uh in general fatigued and, and different flu-like symptoms so um drinking beer didn't really feel like it was going to be the best thing to do that day but you know what i somehow managed to pull it off and it, it ended up being good after a couple of beers, the sickness just kind of went away. So, <laughs> what else do, right? yeah, that's everything. Hangovers go away. Your problems go away. Everything goes away. It's a <laughs> great thing goes away after that third beer. <laughs> yeah, but I did. I went over to uh, the one that you saw. I went over to Rap Brewing. We did stop in at Cycle. Um, oh, I know we that. went to awesome. uh, we went to a place called Birchwood. It's a uh, like a rooftop hotel bar over in St. Pete on the Bay. Um, that was more of a craft cocktail bar, but we, we hit a few places over in St. Pete and it was, uh, it was a really fun day. I'm glad I went over there and I'm glad I kind of powered through it. I wasn't feeling it in the morning, but it ended up working out real well. So, so one, two questions, one, what did you have at rap that you can remember? And then two, I know, uh, you were texting me a while back about your girlfriend asking about rap and like, Mike, you need to tell her how good rap was. Mm -hmm. So what she think was, so second question is what she think of it? She thought the beers were really good. Um, she loved their Goza, which I actually, everything that we had, I had already had previously at Rep. Um, the time that me, you, and Preston went, I got most of those beers. Uh, if you recall, you guys did a show and I did a nine beer flight. <laughs> so, <laughs> did beer flight. What are you talking about? I don't know. Maybe I did 12 Not a beer. Full, like, like, I think I might have done 12 beer maybe. flight. But... Uh, so I had already done all of the beers. The only one that was a new one was a hazelnut bock that Ooh. was pretty good. Um, the hazelnut was, was subtle but sweet and, uh, you know, bock style is like a light, sweet, malt forward style. So um, it, it played well. Uh, that was decent. Um, but their Goza was incredible, you know, incredible as always. Um and uh, the chocolate peanut butter stout was actually a little different this time, in my opinion. It wasn't as good as I remember it being. It, I felt like it was missing the peanut butter and just had a lot of chocolate. But, um, you know, their brewing equipment is so not, you know, what I mean? it's like not computerized. And it's extremely it leaves, it, Yeah, it leaves a lot of room for some for some variances in the beer. So I just don't think it was a great batch, but usually it's on par and i'm not going to knock them for it so but yeah i mean i love yeah. rap their yeah. stuff is always great i mean that's the thing with breweries that have that use non-computerized uh equipment is that you know each batch is technically not going to be the exact same as a batch prior so um i know boegans they don't use computers so i've had that happen awesome a couple weeks ago and it tastes it tastes different every time that's not necessarily a bad thing but I can tell a difference in, in between each batch every time they release. It's just, it's just the beauty, the nature of the beast. You can't really do anything about that unless you get on a computer system. Yep, exactly. But Chris, are you? Uh, Chris, you good? Caca, caca. Nothing. Was that him? That wasn't him. No, that was me. That was me. Bert that was you. Oh, okay. So I guess we're just gonna go into the episode. I got, I got, I got no more filler stuff. <laughs> I think his computer froze because his picture is not moving. Maybe he just reset your shit. <laughs> so oh, um, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah, he's probably gonna jump back he's on gone. here. Um, it's because you called him more handsome than me. Yeah, yeah he's foxy though, and that's that's. Yeah, no, he is. He's a handsome. He's a handsome man. So it's all right. Um. Fuck. Uh, Chris is back. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Isn't All right, back. Cool? <laughs> I think well, that was a giant pain for the most handsome podcast, I think we'd win. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> with, with, with <laughs> in what paradigm? Yeah. That is subjective. <laughs> and if they had the best beard category for podcasts, we would also win. Mm -hmm. Best well maintained beards. We don't look homeless, awesome. but we still rock it. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, For you sure. should see, you, Mike. You remember Thomas? Uh, he, well, everybody remembers Thomas. Used to be on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thomas's Ray Romano. Thomas's beard has gotten so long and just like really, um, uh, yeah, really, really muslimy. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got a little bummy. Yeah, bummy beard. it's it's pretty wild. So I I don't know. I he, he was sending <laughs> he was sending the uh, the snap videos. See a chug, send a chug yesterday, <laughs> and he God. sent he sent nine of them to me, oh and and it started with just an him like. <laughs> Him with like sunglasses on, his big old beard, and he's like drinking just beer after beer. Like three of them came within ten minutes of each other, and then like all of a sudden around beer eight, he was wearing a Mario costume, and he was just like Mario <laughs> chug, <laughs> and the rest of the- and then he was out. Then he was out dressed as Mario the rest of the night. So I love it. Uh, God. God. Anyway, uh, <laughs> got me all. <laughs> this episode is off to a fucking great start. <laughs> I think it's going. I think it's going well. People will laugh at least. speed bumps, but we'll be fine. People yeah, will laugh. That's whatever. I mean, we're yeah. Anyway, so I don't know if you caught anything of what we said, Chris, about it, but Jeff kind of was talking about rap and uh, how great it was, and uh, that's about it. Yeah, we were talking about like the uh, the the automated systems or whatnot. Yeah, about yeah the recipes not being the same because they're doing it by hand instead of by computer yeah i mean it's it's so weird too there's the more you look into it there's so many more variables outside of just automation of the system itself you have like you know yeast cell counts and pitching rates and fermentation temps and all this kind of stuff to where if you're not paying attention to that obviously it's going to change it up from time to time but sure. every brewery's on their own uh, accord i suppose so so chris now that we've all gone through what we're drinking i'm having a katawamba white zombie jeff nice. is having some plum sour farmhouse shit from wicked weed what you. are you drinking I've got the uh, the oldie but the goodie, the golden drock. Ah, so one of my, yeah, man. Oh, man. The nine case. My, yeah, yeah, man. It's one of my oh, favorite my beers of all time. So, like, super warm, nice, like, chocolate, plum, raisin notes going on, but still drinks, like, it's it's thin body. It goes down way too easily. Um, so, it, it should be treating me pretty well. So Nice. And what's really funny is I just forgot our topics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll introduce them. So, All right, Jeff, cover so, me. <laughs> what, we're doing, what we're doing tonight is, uh, and I don't know in which order, but we're going to be talking about our, first. our three, uh, our three most recently tried beers that we think are the best beers we've had in recent memory uh, for each okay. of us. Uh, kind of a continuation off of one of our more popular episodes that we've had, which I know you guys like hearing about the good beers and the different outliers that we have, um, but beer styles we're drinking, so we're going to go off of that and just pick up where we left off and talk about some of the really good standout beers we've had lately. Um, and then we were going to talk about if pumpkin beer was no longer allowed to be a thing, what would we replace it? Is that what we we're going to talk about? Or did I make that up? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, no, no, that'd be the second topic. Okay. If pumpkin beer was no longer a thing, what would we want to replace the fall specialty with and what ideas would you have? And I think that one will be fun. Cause I, I have some really weird ideas. All right. Cool. <laughs> so thank goodness for Untapped because I couldn't even tell you that the top, the, the last three beers I've had that I've really liked without <laughs> actually looking on my Untapped. So I am running through that quickly right now as I uh, go through it. Um, okay. I got one. All right. All right. Does someone know what they, what their top three is? Or I do, yes. I already have them. Okay, Why don't you start out, man? Because I'm still kind of running through the roll. I'm, of actually, I'm actually prepared this time, guys. God damn it. We're, cats have become dogs. What is going on? I, I know. I'm usually <laughs> the leg into his thing, he was still late making his clam chowder. I'm usually <laughs> the least prepared. Yeah, the Priority. clam chowder. I had to put the clam chowder away. It does not go with a plum sour. Um, <laughs> we would have thunk it. All right. So one of them, uh, no surprise here because you guys have heard me talk about it before when I was blacked out at Funky Buddha. Um, <laughs> one, of, one of the best beers that I've had in recent memory um, and in my life is the Love Below at Funky Buddha. Um, it's an imperial stout. They take the same imperial stout, separate it into two different batches, essentially. They age half of it in Cabernet barrels, the other half in bourbon barrels. They then take it individually when they taste right and blend them together to make this just absolutely killer, super complex, very deep tasting imperial stout with a lot of subtleties and different sweetness and, and high, you know, high sugar notes, but really roasty notes as well. The barrels come through. Uh, it, it's one of the better beers I've ever had. It comes in at over 14% alcohol. So just so you guys are aware of that. 
Um, is it that high? I thought it was only 12 some. No. Well, the love below was the last one I had and, and we went up from nine. So I think it was 14. I will check that just because, uh, in the interest of being prepared, I should have already had that, but sign note, they're bottling that, uh, very soon. It's, it's incredible. If you see that bottle, I genuinely believe it is one of their best beers that they ever put out. Um, I'll argue with that. Hell no. It is. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, fuck, where is it? It's not on here. The love below is 12% ABV. So you're right. It's not 14. It's 12. But I'm always wrong. <laughs> so that doesn't surprise me. The other one, <laughs> uh, my next one. So that was, we'll call that number three out of my top three recent beers. The next one is, uh, is from our friends at Rap over in St. Pete. And it is not the peanut butter stout, but it is the oh. peanut butter and jelly stout. Remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. Ooh. That shit oh, was incredible. God. So this is the oh. peanut butter stout that me and Mike have raved about on the show prior to this. Uh, the one that, it, you know, unanimously at World of Beer, when I brought a growler over, everybody agreed is better than Sweet Baby Jesus, which, you know, argument. Substantially better. For argument's sake, it is, it is better than Sweet Baby Jesus. It is a stout, not a porter. Um, which I know most people do the chocolate peanut butter porter. This one is a stout, um, and it, it just is incredible. But we happened to be there on a day where they poured it right out of the tanks. wasn't even kegged yet, and he goes, "Yo, you got to try this beer. Let me. I'll be right back." And he walks in the back, and he comes out with like three little sample glasses of peanut butter and jelly stout, and it blew my fucking mind. It was so good. It's just it was, the, oh my god, yeah. It's the peanut butter stout aged on like grapes and sugar, basically. <laughs> like I think is what he said. Like super simple, but amazing beer. And the grand finale of my uh, beer exploits lately, the one that I think is the best uh, by far, is Wicked Weed Brewing out of the Funkatorium. It's called Silencio. I talked about it last week. I'm going to keep talking about it. It's part of the Canvas series, which I actually looked up. I did not know that, but it's part of the Canvas series. Okay. It's a sour black ale aged in Kentucky bourbon barrels with Madagascar vanilla beans, El Silencio coffee from local mountain air roasting in North Carolina. So it's like fresh coffee, fresh vanilla in a sour dark ale that's aged mm. in Kentucky bourbon barrels. And it's like Silencio is a perfect name because the second I tried it and Cassie tried it, we both just looked at each other silently and was like, what the fuck? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, like you're ready to capture both staring until your eyes get big. And like, <gasps> we like both looked at it and she goes, This might be the best beer I've ever had. And I like looked at her like, Yeah, that's fucking awesome. So, oh man, those are all real. I mean, I haven't had the Wiki Weed, but I had the other two. Oh man, those are some good ass beers, man, especially the rap. Oh, oh, oh boy. Mm -hmm. If that thing was a distribution, it'd be the best selling beer out of Florida. Oh, pff. yeah. Yeah, if I had a if I had a pint glass or a snifter of that, that would easily be a top ten beer I've ever had. Easily. Maybe even the a top five. What, the peanut butter and jelly stout? Peanut butter and jelly would be yeah. probably a top five beer I've ever had in my entire life. Really? Oh, it, without a doubt. And sometimes without, without a doubt. you know, sometimes I think that kind of stuff's cheesy, like those culinary inspired beers. Like I don't I think some people look at them with like a little, you know They poo poo it. They poo poo it because yeah. it's like, oh well that's not real beer, you know. But the point is, it is real beer. It's brewed as real beer, and it tastes fucking amazing. So Absolutely, man. If somebody can push the envelope and brew a real beer with those kind of you know inspirations behind it, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Chris, have you been to uh, rap at all? It's been literally about three years now. Um, and I, I think I've said it before. It's so hard. What's that? <laughs> You're slacking so hard. I know, man. I never get down there. But it's, it's one of those, like, I still remember, though, they were, I want to say they had maybe 20 different beers of their own on draft and all just kind of random styles, obviously like IPAs and porters and stouts and things like that. But, you know, Scotch Ales, Doppelbox, um, Belgian Doubles, um, and I, I've said it before, uh, Lichtenheiner, like that's one of the things that made me want to brew that style. Never heard of it, but it was amazing. And everything I've ever had from them have been in the top five of that category of beer that I've ever tried. So I'm, I'm never not impressed when I go there. With rap? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, dude. They're that, still like that too. Yeah. That Lichtenheiner is like so interesting. That mm -hmm. that's like a style that's not made anywhere. 
and they do it and it somehow works. It does. It's weird. It's smoky. It's sour. It's doughy. It's, a it's sour, like, smoky, bready beer. And it's and you, somehow just like, like yeah. super awesome. No, you, but it's weird. Like you wouldn't think that, but when you try it, it's like, I, I can't even explain it. Like it's perfect for like hot, crazy summer day. It just goes down ridiculously smooth. It was, it, it's so good. And it's just a weird, it's like, um, it's like dogfish head Midas touch, not anything like it in taste, but it's mm-hmm. like that, like, a gruit that hasn't been made in 2,000 years, and dogfish heads like, oh, let's just make it. Yeah, you like, know? That. like, and who makes gruits? No one. But mm-hmm. like, that's what rap. Man. That's what rap did. They're just like, oh, let's make this Lichtenhainer beer, like some kind of weird yeasty, sour, smoky beer. Yeah, exactly. And then they Chris, made it. You have you have a list. What's up? Or you want? Do you have your your top three list, or you want me? To I go do. Ahead and and unfortunately, I haven't been on any like really fun, crazy, exciting adventures to other beer places recently. So all of mine have been like a total wine brought to you by. Um, hey, but, you're not paying us. You don't spot them. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm, like, <laughs> sorry. This um, segment is brought to you by Total Wine. Total Wine and more. Um, no, but the first one was our. So for number three, I would definitely say Sierra Nevada's um, Oktoberfest this year. Um, now, a lot of people kind of gave it some some flack just because it was a little bit lighter than the average Oktoberfest going on. Um, and, and maybe that style has played out to some people as well. Um, but they, they had teamed up with a German brewery to kind of pull this one off. And as far as like a traditional style fest beer goes, if it's done correctly, can be one of those ones where six pack like disappears in an hour and you have no idea how that happened. It's just yeah. that easy to drink, man. And they, they killed it. It was awesome. Um, super flavorful, but also super light and easy to drink. Um, I'm hoping they do something similar next year, but, um, that's also me kind of being a fanboy of seasonal beers. So I don't know if you guys tried that one out at all or nope. no, 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 definitely get, dude, get at least a bottle of it, man. It, it's one of those, like, it's, it's simple yeah. and it's, it's underestimated. Um, and it pulls off what it's trying to do extremely well. Um, number two was the, uh, stone enjoy by, uh, 1031 16. That was the. I hear that, that's the tangerine one. Yeah, yeah. yeah tangerine I like about those, Yeah. And I want to say that was like that was one of those ones where it was exactly what I wanted at the time. So I don't know if necessarily it's like one of the best beers I've had recently, but like at that moment I wanted something super like super citrusy, super hoppy, and it delivered on everything. Man, it's got like twelve different types of hops in it. Ninety IBUs, nine point four percent. The tangerine Shit. is in there. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's in there, but it's it's really really well balanced. So it's not one of those like it's a tangerine beer that also tastes like an IPA. It's just super super well mellow. So, um, and then actually Friday night, um, I was able to try out the Five Beans from Six Point. Oh, I heard it's so good this year, yeah. dude. Um, again, I've been in the beer industry for a long time, so few beers make me geek out as much as Six Beans uh, or Six Points Bean series does. So three beans got me onto it. Four beans was amazing last year, um, and this year did not disappoint. I'm pretty sure they like this year. It was um, coffee beans, Ramada beans, uh, cacao beans, vanilla beans, and then black cardamom, which was a weird intake on it. Um, it's a shitload of beans. It's a lot of it's five beans actually. Um, <laughs> but dude, it worked amazingly. Like it, it's one of those ones where like it was. It was abrasive in the right ways, but if you if you have a few cans of those and you sit on those for I don't know maybe a year or two, it's just going to get better. So yeah. if you see it out in the stores and you pick one up, I definitely recommend trying one now. Try one in a while. Um, but it's yeah, I've always been impressed by Six Point and what they do. So yeah, they do really good stuff. Except I have had some beers that are just real weird from them, but most of the time you can rely on some of their on their stuff to be really good. Yeah, yeah, dude, their sure. resin is one of my favorite beers of all time. But what yeah. happened to Global Warmer? Why is Global Warmer not good anymore? Uh, when's the last time you had it? Last year. Yeah, they. I, I'm pretty. Sh- I'm not sure if that's a seasonal or if that, that's one of those ones where they. It was a one and done or not, but like when it was fresh, it was it was amazing. Yeah, because I remember like everybody a couple years ago was like going ape shit over Global Warmer. They're like, when's it coming out? It's going to be so great and blah blah. And I had never had it before, and then. It came out and I tried it and it must have like it tasted infected like it didn't taste right at all. It had yeah. this weird like bitey like metallic bite to it and, and I was just, I, you know I didn't like it. I tried it at like seven different places too. And every weird. single time I tried it, I was like, this beer is just not good. Yeah, just I don't know. 
<clears throat> is it my turn? Oh wait, it I do want to give turn. I want to give an honorable right, mention. Shout out. Um, honorable I mention. want to I want to throw uh, Last Snow on there only because that's another one where I geek out whenever it comes out and I recently yes. found a couple bottles. And uh, Funky Buddha deserves it, man. That that beer is amazing. So you know, say what you want about him. That that's one of those ones where as soon as I see that it's out, I go out and try to find it. Hmm. Weird yeah, that Buddha has made both our lists. Bottom, 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 bottom all. What's that? Yeah. Well, I said I tried to get this last release of Last Snow, but can people buy ten bottles of this shit? So, I mean, I might have been able topic. to help you out if I didn't drink both of them, but whatever. So it's, it's my turn, right? It is your turn. All right, cool. So I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull a Chris, and I'm gonna uh, mention four beers, but two of them are, f- are from the same brewery, so technically three. All right, so. Funky. Uh, <laughs> so third, <laughs> third place. Uh, I actually had it on our first episode. The three of us. It was the Dogfish Head Sequench. Uh, oh, ale. really? So yep, that was. Uh, I I drank about cool right, to put things into perspective. Every Friday after work, I have my TGIF beers, and I get flights everywhere I go. So I've had. Probably since that beer, like probably fifty to sixty diff- other beers, and this one is probably the one of the you know the third best one I've had in the last two months, you know, month and a half, six, eight weeks. So, oh, yeah, Dogfish Head Sequench would be number three for me, uh, and then uh, coming in at number two would be <laughs> none other than Bowiegans, their Trahopical Fusion IPA, which is their rendition of the. Uh, the Florida IPA, which is pretty much uh, citrus a citrus bomb. bomb. Yeah. Had that at their bottle release, and I loved it, considering it was an IPA. I gave it a four out of five on untapped, which for me is a pretty high score. Um, What's your average if you one? Don't mind me? Uh, IPAs? Like, well, just like just the average score that you give out. Oh, I give out? Um, I kind of take after Preston, so... I, Average score will probably be around a 3.25 or a 3.5. Okay. That's, you know, if, if I give a beer that I, I enjoyed it, it didn't stick out. Anything four and above is something that I kind of went ape shit over and was like, oh, my God, this is so good. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, this is this. I, I got a couple glasses of it. Um, and then uh, coming in at number one. Uh, well, not, not really number one, but uh, uh, the, the last two ones is uh, – Sticky Treats by Funky Buddha. I knew it. I gave, <laughs> really? I gave that, yeah, I gave that a 475 out of 5. I loved the F out of that beer. I knew I, you were going to go with Funky, so Funky made all our lists. <laughs> <laughs> like that, a lot of people have problems with, they're not, they're, they weren't getting the flavor or the smell of the Sticky Treats. The F and S out of that. And then um, uh, the other one I wanted to mention, which is this from Dogfish Head, since they're my favorite brewery of all time, a beer I wasn't expecting to like, and I absolutely loved it, the Pennsylvania Tuxedo. Yeah, dude. dude that beer I is so good. That. Yeah, that, that, that would beer be was so freaking good. That's the spruce That's the spruce one, yeah, right? Yeah, spruce, yeah, spruce one. Pale. Fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Derek, because Derek – is said uh, they're releasing that again this year, and I'm gonna Hell buy yeah, a whole six pack or four. Hey, so, hey, Derek. <laughs> Hi, Derek. So, Sam just released a new book. Um, I think it's like Off Centered Leadership or whatever. I've been reading that one recently. Um, so if you're a big beer geek, definitely check it out. But they actually do an interview with the. Uh, it's a clothing company. I want to say that they actually kind of tied in with. It's Woolrich. Um, yeah, Woolrich. So they they yeah, did yeah. an interview with the CEO of like Woolrich and kind of how both of their like business ethos align and all those different kind of things. So it was really really interesting to see where that beer came from, but how much more of a backstory there is than just a label you see on a on a shelf somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, that beer is so good. Like Dude, it's holy awesome. Shit. Yeah. Oh god, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. But yeah, those are, those are my my three uh, or you know three and whatever. Man, it's really strange that Funky Buddha made both of our or all three of our lists. I am cigars, a fanboy. And Cigar City yeah. made zero of our lists. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love a good go to, and I had a pretty solid white oak last night too. But talk is shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I do. Okay, so I actually just had a uh, Cigar City growler of uh, of one of their new. Um, Imperial Stouts, and I don't remember the name, but I have the growler inside, so I'll grab it after. I'll grab it on the break. Um, 
and I'll and I'll tell you guys what it was. But I drank the entire growler in one sitting, and it's an imperial stout, so it was a, it was a pretty uh, it was a pretty drunk night. But it you. was really good, uh, very smooth. They, I mean, the thing about Cigar City is uh, what I what I think they used to excel at. I, I think they still excel at. Um, I just think the rest of the beer industry caught up to them, and that's the only reason that I say they're not they're not the best in Florida anymore. Is that like like they hit style on most of their stuff, but they stopped pushing the envelope on everything. Yeah, well, maybe that could be a future topic on episode because that that whole thing could be a, you know, a huge topic and and opinion based on what what happened to them. What went yeah, wrong, I really I didn't mean to allude to that. No, 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 you're fine. It, it's fine. It's just, you said it. I was like, man, that's a good topic idea. <laughs> good. It's going to be a hard one. It's going to be a hard one to discuss to you because I don't know about you guys, but like I was a fanboy when they first started. So like I've always seen but nothing but like a half full kind of optimistic thing whenever I look at them. Um, so it'd be curious to see how other people see it who, you know, they, they kind of look at it a little bit more objectively. So yeah. yeah. I sure. mean, I think I, I was a fanboy too. I just think that, like, I still think their cores are fucking awesome. I just don't know what else they do anymore that's stellar. Like, even Hunapu doesn't have yeah. the same kind of vibe that it used to. It's still well, packing. Hunapu keeps like, changing every year too, so. Yeah. It's still getting, like, I think, what was it, like 4,000, 5,000 people last year? Yeah, I went last year. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. It was really fun. But I don't know if that's for Hunapu that it gets that, or the fact that it's like such a huge beer festival. Oh man, yeah. If if you're if you're a beer fan, and even outside of just getting your two or four bottles or whatever it is now, like you will try so many new things that day that you never oh, would have had God, the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. dude, that's so. like that's when I first tried Civil Society. They had Toppling Goliath. They had Jay Wakefield, Three Sons, Rap. Uh, like everybody was there. They they had yeah. they had eighty tents or something or more than that. Dogfish had Ballast Point Bells. Everybody was pouring there. Mm-hmm. It was insane. So like I'm I for think sure a lot of going this year, dude. You yeah, have to. Year. You absolutely sure. have to. All right. Now I get weekends off. Sorry for coming Take off the rails there with a whole new topic. No. When we come back, good. we're talking basic so. bitch pumpkins. Yeah, and on that note, we're going to take a quick break, get some beers, and we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, back to part two while Jeff is meandering with whatever the hell he's doing. I opened up a second beer because I felt like I had to catch up with the last couple of weeks of me not drinking. So this one, Jeff mentioned, uh, actually he didn't, but whatever, fuck it. <laughs> this one's high wire, <laughs> high wire lager. Uh, no, yeah, by high wire. Three Ring Brewery. What? The high wire is made, brewed, and bottled by Three Ring Brewery in Asheville. Oh. Um, so I don't know if it's. I don't think it's high wire brewing. I just think there's a a beer called a, high wire. A, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Sounds exciting. That's my my second year king off. What's about to be the biggest shit show we've ever done in recent memory. Okay, cool. My uh, post Fort Lauderdale. So then this one here <laughs> is my next one. It's uh Unibrew Blanche de Chambly, uh, or White of Chambly for you people who don't speak French like me. Um, <laughs> and the Cigar City uh, bomber that I had is uh, it's actually out of the Cigar City brew pub that's not that that's not in their uh, actual brewery. It's like 20 minutes right. down the road. They brewed, it's called Space and Time. It's a 10.5% Russian Imperial Stout that got a solid 4.4 stars on Untap. So it's fucking good beer. Not bad, you man. All in one sitting? I, I drank a 22 ounce, yeah. yeah Don't judge sorry. Me. The bed that night. I'm sorry, a 32 ounce in one sitting. Oh, uh, you definitely pee the bed. <laughs> I did not. I didn't. But it's ten point five percent, so that's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, bad ass. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. For thirty two ounces in one night. Yeah, yeah it was. It was fun. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So the second half, we're gonna take things a little bit fun, not so serious like Jeff's hour long rant and description of Asheville. Yeah, that was boring. Uh, and then the episode, listen, prior to this one, we, we sat, me and Chris sat down with Preston from the Beer Chasers to talk about the GABF. So we have a little bit of fun in this one. And this is Je- uh, Jeff's uh, idea, which we all kind of 
thought was was cool. So if pumpkin, excuse me, bourbon, if pumpkin beers were outlawed entirely in the craft beer industry, which I wouldn't be necessarily opposed to, I, what would replace pumpkin beer? <laughs> Don't get, or what, let's, let's not or get what would you, or what I'm you guys want? Yeah. I've got a sympathetic <laughs> ear to the pumpkin beer. I'm just saying. Do you wear that? I, I kind of do. I, I put on my. I, okay, hold on. So October rolls around. I put on my best Han Solo outfit. Oh, sick! And I look like oh. every other girl out there. Um, now there, there's a few of them, man. That you know, I kind of geek out about every year. Like you know, good gourd. Yeah, Tyrex <laughs> orange mocha frappuccinos. Um, <laughs> fancy, pumpkin, <laughs> fancy pumpkin barrel aids. Yeah. No, they're, they're That's like like, like a right. pumpkin. I'm a fan. I don't. I think oh. it's more than. Don't judge me, you motherfuckers. It's it's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already judging you, it's, it's nostalgia. It's one of those, like, it may not be the best beer going through my lips, but at the same time, I remember when I first tried it, kind of what it introduced me to a lot of the time. Um, so so it's usually like a one and done with those kind of beers. Um, but, yeah, with, with that same accord, like, this year, as far as a lot of production goes, there were a lot of breweries that really scaled back or just didn't sell nearly as well as they thought they would in, in that category. So, well, that's not a big surprise. <laughs> I mean, honestly, well, it is and it isn't. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those. They it was a it was a burning flame like five years ago. Everyone and their mom it's, had to have a pumpkin beer. But yeah, it's it's. I think people being a little bit more well educated, moving on past that, and having that kind of category before, no one's really impressed by it anymore. No, I think yeah. if you're gonna have a pumpkin beer now it still has to be a quality beer. Before, the fact just that it was a pumpkin beer meant people were going to buy it. But yeah. now, people are like, fuck that. I want a beer that doesn't taste like garbage. So they don't buy the shitty ones. Yeah, beforehand, it was like, throw you know pumpkin spice into an amber or some sort of wheat, and you got away with it. Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. Shock Tops pumpkin beer oh, tasted gross, like swill. Dude. Like, it was like oh, the worst. Yeah. It was like somebody drank or ate pumpkin pie and then peed into a bottle and gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, here's my pumpkin flavored pee. Enjoy. That like, reminds me of the so scene from Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With our boy Harlan Williams. Who was also wearing <laughs> a game of during beer. That. <laughs> God, we do love Harlan Williams, don't we? We do. Absolutely. And all of his doppelgangers. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke, guys. Anyway, let's get to the topic. Uh, so, if, if pumpkin beers were to, were to be outlawed and not be made anymore, what what styles, flavoring, whatever, would you guys think would take its place? I guess we could say in terms of like uh, the fall, kind of like big time seasonal fall beer. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, who's up first? Who wants it? I'll go. Go for it, man. Yeah, but I have weird ones. I like it. Go for it, man. Do we all about off, the weird? You know that. First off, I think orange mocha frappuccino. <laughs> That's just fun oh to say. Let's go right now. Wouldn't that be a badass fall seasonal beer, though? No, I'm kidding. let's go. Um, I, I couldn't. I couldn't follow you. So, so my first, uh, my first one, and I said some of these in the group chat when we were talking about maybe doing this this uh, story, but I think the first one I would want to see not. would be something like. Mountain Air, um, which you could basically do anything, but spruce, <laughs> spruce tips, uh, juniper. Are you for breeze right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> shit we've already talked about today. <laughs> spruce tips, juniper, like maybe some gin barrels, something you could do like that age it in gin barrels, like that kind of false you know, Christmas tree spicy kind of thing, I think would be really fucking cool and way better than pumpkin beers. Also, cranberry sauce. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, Love that terror pumpkin, fat pumpkin berry, holy moly, that's really good. Was it? I haven't tried it yet. Oh, yeah. I, I liked it. I'm not a big fan of terrapin, but continue, Jeff. Okay. Cranberry sauce. Uh, or... <laughs> I'm just thinking of things that you eat at Thanksgiving, basically. But <laughs> Fruitcake. Um, uh, well, like, for instance, Funky Buddha doesn't make a pumpkin beer. They make a sweet potato casserole, right? And it's way better than pumpkin beer. So, like, you can do anything. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Well, and that's, yeah. that's kind of what, like, what I was 
thinking too is I think there's going to be a lot more breweries taking a little bit more of a creative approach to it because if, if you look at how a lot of the breweries not necessarily like been forced into having to innovate every single year but people are expecting something a little bit newer a little bit more different um so you're going to find a lot of these breweries doing things to where it's their own personal interpretation of what fall might mean to them so you've got like right. you know funky buddha doing the sweet potato casserole to where yes every, everyone's familiar with that in the sense of where it's kind of included in those holiday dishes or there's this you know family dinners and, and whatnot um, and there's a lot of other breweries starting to use sweet potato as well. Um, I've seen a couple like Breckenridge did a uh, pumpkin spice latte stout. Um, there was Elysian who did a, a pumpkin stout as well. So, you know, they're, they're starting to branch outside of just like I said, that amber, that wheat category just kind of being driven into the ground, which is adding like cinnamon and nutmeg to it. Right. Do you think like the pumpkin beer thing? Like, obviously, the pumpkin thing kind of started with Starbucks, right? Like, that's kind of where you trace the roots to this whole pumpkin craze. It's like Starbucks did the pumpkin spice lattes, and everybody kind of went crazy for it. And now, pumpkin spice, everything caught on. Yes yeah. or no? Like, I don't know about you guys, but at least down in Florida, I would kind of attribute the, the, the pumpkin beer craze to Shipyard. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, yeah. yeah. I with pumpkin head, too, like, yeah. it, I want to say that, you know, within what I remember, at least... They were the first readily available pumpkin beer um, every year that people kind of started geeking out about. And it was one of those first times that you, you saw something that you, you had a really nostalgic emotional connection with that was kind of in a different kind of way, whether it be coffee like with Starbucks or whether it be beer with whatever shipyard was doing. Like I, I still remember having friends of mine who, you know, they would, they would buy cases of a pumpkin head. And they're not even big beer fans just to have like a, a Halloween party in March when it was going out of code. And do that whole thing. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'll give you both of those. I mean, I think Shipyard Pumpkinhead is what brought that flavoring to the masses, and and what kind of turned everybody on. And I'm sure it's like the wives or girlfriends saying, "Oh my God, you get a pumpkin beer too, and we can drink pumpkin stuff together." Oh my God, isn't this the cutest? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I feel like I, I think so too. I feel like for my last one, I think it maybe it's not pumpkin beer, but maybe the maybe the change I want to see is like you were just saying pumpkin stouts maybe you do like pumpkin spiced latte beer like not like not pumpkin spice beer include the coffee so like you do pumpkin spice coffee beers i think this year so, is the first time I've that seen would be those. cool right so i think that'd be cool i may or may not know this certain local brewery that i that is what it is but their take on pumpkin beer was a pumpkin spice latte so it's like a white stout essentially made with pumpkin spices on it so it's super light, pumpkin flavored, all that kind of stuff going on too. But it, it's it's slightly different than the, what the norm has been over the last five years. I think Red Surface you know is doing something like that too. Yeah, I feel like you need like a cream a cream stout, like a milk stout with some yeah, like a like a blonde, yeah. yeah yeah like a blonde ale with like coffee, cocoa nibs, a little bit of lactose in it. Yeah, some some cinnamon and all that kind of stuff going on in the background. So for me, I, cool. I would like to see. I'd like to see. I like cranberries a lot. Yeah, cranberry sauce. Uh, cranberry sauce, beers, or maybe like cranberry sauce with other ingredients, you know, being put in. Um, but I think like a cranberry saison or like a sour or something along that line, I think would turn pretty awesome. But I know brewing with cranberry sauce is so gelatinous that it's really hard to pull flavor from it um, enough to, you know, brew a, a 10 gallon batch and whatnot. But, um, I would, uh, I, for me, it would be cranberry. Uh, I like cream ale, so I, a cranberry cream ale would, would be pretty fantastic. Mm, yes. But I think a lot of people would say, like, holiday. So, like, shout out to Matt and, and Brandon from Mosquito County for the Windermere. They had a holiday porter, which was, like, coffee and a coffee milk, a milk, coffee milk porter with, like, holiday stuff. But, like, kind of spices like that that isn't necessarily all pumpkin or all cranberry or all something else but like but then you almost fall into like that that winter beer category you know what i mean yeah yeah i but yeah dude, that's i mean i it's hard for me to tell the difference between that and winter like for me winter beer is more boozier yeah more, yeah, more coffee big, more yeah, little bigger little warming having sort of that the, the, bigger the, the, better like, out, yeah like like I kind of 14 percent oh, out because yeah, the warming on your boat yeah well like remember uh, that's um, just me remember um 
and I don't know if they still do it. The Sam Adams cold snap. I think that was their fall season oh, already. So good. Oh, or was oh, yeah. it winter? Spring. Or was it winter? Spring. Did it, okay, yeah. The cold snap Alpine was spring. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, like I when I think of those kind of beers, I don't think of spring or winter. Like that, like crisp, like piney juniper berry. Uh, spruce tasting that to me is is fall like that's like that's what i that's what i would want to see like alpine spring was like actually a fall beer to me you know what i mean mm-hmm. like cause the, the flavors played yeah. for the fall season better in my opinion absolutely all right i'll go yeah, a little out there and, and i'd like to see i think it'd be kind of fun to see like a munich dunkel or like a vienna lager with mm-hmm. cranberries and black peppercorn. So like that cranberry yeah. stuffing kind of thing going on. Oh, stuffing. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe I'm in it. Potatoes and gravy. You do a, uh, right? a cauliflower and cheese right. beer. No. <laughs> I don't, don't want to do that. <laughs> or, like or, cauliflower and cheese or, or no. <laughs> or <laughs> grandma's uh, green bean casserole. <laughs> oh, green bean casserole is really good though. Brussels sprouts. Yeah, yeah. Vegetable. yeah it's great. Oh, yeah. Ugh. No, or okay. If you can translate like a gravy flavor. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. I just said mashed potatoes and gravy. How would you do that? Though? Yeah, there you go. That, yeah. yeah, that's hard to do with that. Being a little weird, kind of. Ah, oh, damn. I don't know, man. You can track? do anything with beer now, right? Like, like, <laughs> yeah. Fucking mushroom spinach fig beer. You can make a pizza beer for Christ's sake. <laughs> I've not seen very, it done. Not a very yeah. good one. <laughs> no, terrible. But you can still do it. Hmm. But yeah, for me, I, I think style-wise, I would love to see a cream ale flavoring. I mean, pretty much what we all just said: uh, cranberry, the cinnamon, whatever. But for a new uh, to replace the pumpkin, a cream ale style would be, I think would be pretty killer. Or apple chocolate. pie. No. Ooh, what about apple pie though? That that could work out pretty well too, man. I know there's like a few apple pie a la mode. Not like like you gotta have that creaminess, that like vanilla with the apple and the cinnamon. Mm-hmm. Like that would be so fucking good for a fall season. Oh, for sure, man. Yep, I'm changing. I mean, it. What other pies are there? Like there's pumpkin pie, apple pie, sweet carrot potato. cake pie, sweet potato pie, carrot cake pie, oh, what? pecan I, pie. I had Pe- um, ooh, there you go. I had pecans and pudding. almonds. I had a pe- banana pudding pie. That was real good. Ooh, that's a good one too. Yeah, like Lazy Mag does a uh, what is it? The uh, sweet potato southern, stout. They do the, sweet, the Jefferson stout. Yeah, sweet potatoes and that. But then they also do the um, uh, southern pecan. A pecan I uh, say. Yeah, pecan nut brown or something. Yeah, like that. Oh, yeah. pecan dude. nut brown. Dude, that stuff is. Dude, awesome. we just tap into like that's it. The pecan pie. Mm-hmm. So we it would be, have to be a dessert beer to replace the pumpkin. Well, I that's mean, pretty much I, what all pumpkin beers are now, anyway. I was just gonna say none of them are sessionable, like, or like session drinking beers. So we'd have to do something like that as like a like a, a porter, and then do a cranberry with cinnamon Cream and apple, apple and whatever. Yeah. I think we're millionaires. All right, somebody email it to yourself. Redneck copyright. We're good. <laughs> Except that Today's dates, October thirtieth at ten twelve at night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have we have the video proof. It's our idea. We're also going to televise it to, or tell everybody to do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. If you do that, I will. Chris, find you gotta make you. that. Happen, right? What's that? <laughs> Go homebrew, homebrew some pecan pie and cranberry apple and with cinnamon cream ale. Challenge accepted. I'll do it. All right, cool. We'll head You're over the to. Wild. Uh, White really? stout guy, so you you can do white stouts with anything. I thought you said white stallion for a second. I was like, what? <laughs> well, he has that well, too. He is first a white of all, stallion. Can't it be both? Like, <laughs> Chris got that fry money. <laughs> I got that fry money. What was uh? What was well, the white stout that you did? Money. The white stout you did for uh for the the contest? Homer. Yeah, I did a uh, coconut white stout. It was awesome. Oh, dude, that's Thank you, man. Bomb. I appreciate it. It's been, it's been a long time coming, so it worked out a little bit. So, are you going to brew that again? Uh, actually, if if you were to listen very very faintly, you hear the fermenter off to my my left, blowing bubbles out of that same beer right now. So really, yeah. <laughs> so you may see it out and about kind of soon. So. If we were to uh, get some people to sign up for sponsorships, 
um, and um, made that the beer of the show, would you be able to do that for us? <laughs> uh, I'd be all right with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that. You know, if people, are you really are you really hitting at me about that? <laughs> if people like, were gonna sign up for sponsorships and stuff, <clears throat> people sign up. <clears throat> uh, talk to the guy who runs the restaurant. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, you. Somebody's, somebody's you're the one really running a restaurant down there. He's got no, that I'm, super cry money. You got that, you got that I'm restaurant trying to money. Say, I'm trying to say we got to have people sign up for sponsorships. I'm trying to get some people interested. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. We got to do that. We all got to do that. So if you're interested in... in <laughs> <laughs> you finally so picked the ball up. <laughs> if, if you're interested in having your brewery, your beer, or any merch highlighted on the show... Email us at at the bar podcast at gmail.com. We are available. <laughs> or reach sure. out or, or to reach out on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, in, uh, Instagram. And that's, I think that's the only ones you can contact us with, but yeah. yeah. We're also, if, you, than you think. if you want me to just like show up somewhere and make an appearance dressed as like a clown, I, I hear that's a big thing these days. I'll do that. If you want, I would recommend a school it's, park. There is a, <laughs> a two hundred dollar minimum for just to show up, <laughs> but I'll come in full Part clown package, full clown garb. I'll be all clowned up. It's fifty dollars extra for the bulletproof vest because yeah, <laughs> we gotta get life insurance. <laughs> so anyway, I think that wraps it up for episode twenty six, twenty seven. This is 26. You missed 26. Oh, that's right. I missed 26. 26 yeah, episode 27. Yeah, yeah. So, any, what are you guys up to, man? Any any plugs? Anything going on to wrap up the show? Nah. I'm good, nah, just, dog. Just, just, I ain't got uh, nothing. I was sick, man. I was sick. What do you want me to plug? Is it your birthday coming up? My birthday's coming up, yeah. In, in, uh, in about a month. Ooh. November 28th it will be my birthday. Ooh. Um, I will be up actually in Orlando for my birthday, guys. So if you want to get together, we, and do, we may have to do a, uh, a quick do some podcast. Well, booze what's, booze. So my mom Talk is trust. getting uh, my mom is getting remarried up in Mount Dora uh, on the Saturday, the twenty sixth, and then I will be in town uh, Sunday and Monday as well uh, in Orlando, not in Mount Dora. To uh, celebrate my birthday up there in Orlando with all my friends, all my friends. So, friends. so if y'all want to go out and uh, try some beers at some cool spots or anything, just let me know. I'll be there. Cool, I'm in, man. And I'm not just talking to you two <laughs> fine gentlemen, like anybody no, in the Orlando no, no. area. You just you just announced that to our thousands and thousands of listeners. All of our listeners are welcome to join. We have had, uh, we did have a listener. Um, come to my going away party, which was pretty sweet. So, you know, Adam, what's up? So, take Adam's lead and come and party with me for my birthday. Yeah. Chris, what you doing? Not too much, man. I know it's it's festival season, but uh, it's fest season. You got some games going on. Yeah, I'm working a couple of them. We got a Orlando Beer Fest coming up, a couple events in Jacksonville, St. Augustine, things like that, but, you know, nothing too much outside of the norm. Cool. And those are all, typically all Saturdays, right? Um, Thursday through Saturday, typically. So the okay. next one will be uh, November 9th up at Stogies. So if you're up in um, up in St. Augustine area, like historical downtown, super cool little spot. They're actually finally just getting back up after the hurricane kind of plowed through. So go give them your money because I'm sure they want it. <laughs> they could use it. <laughs> yeah. The best plug we've ever done. <laughs> give them their money because they want it. They, they need it. I... Uh, you know, I'm more of a go right at it guy myself. I like that plug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go give yeah, them your more ways than one. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. And then and, uh, and- what I got coming on this Saturday, which take that back, you guys. This episode won't be out Saturday. So the one year anniversary of Red Cycle was pretty legit. I got really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fast forward to the future, I see. We do we do some back to the future plugs. Yeah, it's weird. It's 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 super confusing. Um, so what do I have? What do I have? Uh, Saturday the twelfth, I will be at Orlando Beer Fest with Chris. <laughs> uh, I'll be drinking. I'm not pouring, but I'll be there giving Chris a hard time. Both. 
so yeah, that is October, uh, October, November 12th at, in downtown Orlando. It's the Orlando Beer Fest. I will be there. Chris will be there. Jeff will not be there. And then, then I Jeff's wish. event, uh, the end of November. But uh, yep, yeah, uh, Red Cypress's one year anniversary was last Saturday, and uh, just want to congratulate Red Cypress on hitting their year anniversary and wish them many more to come. Especially yeah, that silver logo, man. Congrats, guys. Especially like within the first year, that's that's awesome. Especially yeah, with so. having a barrel aged Imperial Stout represented at Hunafu Day within their first year and all the different landmarks that they've had in this first year of all, hitting distribution so hard and having these great beers that they're, I mean, they're well respected in, in less than a year. It's amazing. Yeah, Good for so them. Couldn't have a lot of love. Better. We got a lot of love for Ryan and Garrett and all them at Red Cypher. So, yeah, they're fucking awesome people. You guys are, you guys are awesome. But uh, with that said, we're going to wrap it up. I am Mike. We got Jeff and Chris. And thanks again for listening and watching on YouTube. And until next time, we'll see you guys at the bar. We good?